What's happening is a just reward for a guy who's been training non-stop since age 11. His teenage years were spent like this, swimming lap after lap, thousands of hours staring at a black line on the bottom of a pool. Bob Bowman is his coach. For about five years, he did not take one day off. Christmas Day? Nope. We trained on Christmas. His birthday? Oh, yeah, that's a given. Twice on his birthday. How do you do that every day? To be honest, it's not wanting to lose, wanting to do something that no one else had ever done before. That's what got me out of bed every day. The workouts were so intense, Bowman became known as the mad scientist. What were some of the toughest workouts? 10,000 meters for time. Just 10,000 meters all out? Yeah. Ready, go. And that takes about two and a half hours. Full out yeah. racing? Just swim as hard as you can for two and a half hours. Like, horrible, horrible workouts. You know, when you see them on paper, you're like, I can't do this. He makes us do it so we're more confident and we know that we can do anything that we put our mind to. Payoff came at the 2004 Athens Olympics. Phelps won six gold medals. An extraordinary achievement, but he just missed Mark Spitz's record of seven goals. Then came Beijing, and a chance to make history. To win eight goals, Phelps needed to swim 17 times in nine days. So many things could go wrong in Beijing, and they did. In the 200-meter butterfly final, his goggles filled with water virtually from the start. They started filling up more and more and more, and about 75 meters left in the race. I could see nothing. I couldn't see the black line. I couldn't see the T. I was, I was purely going by stroke count. And I couldn't take my goggles off because they were underneath two swim caps. Somehow, he not only won his fourth gold medal of the games, yes! he also set a world record. But after winning his sixth gold, one short of Spitz's record, Phelps now admits for the first time he was whipped. I remember saying, I got nothing left. I could just look, see it in his face. If you look at the pictures right after the race and he was in the water, I thought, wow, he is really tired. Phelps could be in major trouble, you know. Then came the 100-meter butterfly final, the race everyone remembers. With little left in his tank and a historic seventh gold medal on the line, Phelps was behind Serbia's Milorad Kavic with just 35 meters to go. I was like, please get your hand on the wall first. Please get your hand on the wall first. Phelps needs to get by Kavic. I remember like the last like two or three strokes that I had misjudged the finish. I thought that was the race. He gets it done again! I saw I had won and turned around, looked at the board, and saw it was by one one hundredth. One one hundredth of a second! And that's where the emotion came out. You know, that's where I, you know, the big splash of the water, like the, the big roar. I mean, you could tell that I was pretty intense after that race. A photo finish if ever there was one. That's Phelps on the left, Kavich on the right. Looking at these photos, Phelps noticed something. What, what's going on there? Do you see here? He's picking his head up before he's finishing. So it's acting as like a speed bump. So he's coming up and then trying to lift his head up before he touches the wall. And now mine is, mine's in a straight streamline. So that's the difference of the race. If his head's down there, he wins. Hands down, hands down wins the race. A tilt of the head helped Michael Phelps become an Olympic legend. And look at me. Beauty.